Back in history, Chris Malting was started. It was a flour miller, uh, F and G Smith, uh, mainly in flour milling in the East Anglia area. Um, over time, they bought into Maltings, and the Crisp family became involved. Um, the Crisp Group now has five sites in the UK, Great Ryber being the largest site, which produces the most varied types of malt uh, in our process as well. So we produce on site 115,000 tonnes of malt per year uh, for a whole range of customers, from uh, brig breweries down to the small craft brewing market. Growth of the company over the last few years has been mainly uh, additional maltings that have been purchased with the company so we've grown to uh, 455,000 tonnes per year full production. We've now expanded into Europe uh, where we own the maltings in Hamburg and also in Poland. We do anything from the 25 kg sack up into the one tonne so we do half tonnes as well. I mean the majority of our stuff that we're doing at the minute is solely really the 25 kg bags. So in in terms of what we're sending out today, we're, at the minute we're roughly sort of 80 to 100 pallets a day. This can range from anything going out to America, containers wise, out to Asia, and then we do a lot of national for the smaller craft brewers. When the pallet arrives to the customer, it needs to be perfect. It's the first thing that they're going to see from us. So in terms of bag size, stability of the pallet, and the presentation of the pallet, that is key to us. We certainly wanted a higher rate of bags per hour. We need more production out of the facility, but also a big driver for us was reliability and after sales service. We know Premier Tech very well through the inline weighers we've used, the ABW weighers in the past, so, and they're also a big player within the market, so we knew of the company. We based the specification of the line on 20 tonnes an hour of whole malt. We needed to be able to pack with no overhang. Uh, we also had to take into account crushed malt, which has varying bulk densities, so we're working within two ranges of bags. As we produce so many different malt types, we have a complex transfer system and we run through the APW wire so we can batch transfer to ensure we have no product contamination between malt types transport into the bagging line. What we've done with the EPW is we've linked it up to our SCADA system, so every time that the wire drops a 50, uh, 50 kilo increment, it will then send a pulse back to our computer system so we can then take data from that to be able to see how much we've transferred through into our bins. So in that way it works really well. With the OML, I like the magazine system, so the guys are then able to fill the magazine up with two, three hundred bags. They then can walk away from that and go and carry on with other jobs. Changing from recipes from one to another in terms of bag size, we're looking roughly about three to four minutes. From the OML 1140, the uh, bags are then stitched, sent through the inline check wire up onto the high speed palletizer. The HPL it works really well, bags automatically feeding into the palletizer. It's pretty high speed. We're then also able to stack eight high up to 10 high with our bags. Again, I like the um, safety system, the interlocks, where you'd actually physically put the keys into the lock so if the guys then needed to go underneath, clean up or anything like that, you knew that they were safeguarded and there wasn't anything going to happen. With the nature of our product, as you can imagine, once it settles into the bag, it tends to move a little bit. So with the stretch wrapper that we've got, we're actually able to turn up the stretch as high as we can get to try and increase the stability of the pallet. We've actually gone from a manual producing line, so the guys are physically filling the bags themselves, stitching the bags. From that we were producing roughly seven and a half tonne an hour. And then onto the Kronos packing line, we're now producing sort of 13 to 14 tonne an hour. Eventually, once the guys get comfortable and happy with running the line, we will be up to about 20 tonnes an hour. The guys who came over to do the commissioning, the engineers, he was really helpful. He, any problems that we had, if there's anything we didn't understand, he'd give us the time to make sure that we did. This packing line installation is part of a much larger project. So getting all aspects of the project to tie in together and not hinder other work going on within the area. Um, this is where we found Primatech very easy to work with in planning the delivery and the, I think we did hold it back a little bit when we wanted delivery and they were very accommodating to that and eventually it came on site when we needed it. We've more than doubled our production rate uh, we've improved the quality of the formation of the pallet and we're very happy with the uh, bagging system. 
After sales service was very important to us in purchasing the line. Um, we've signed up for an annual service contract um, which gives us the helpline as well as a yearly maintenance. We've known Primatech Kronos for a number of years. We have used their packing heads before um, on previous machines for a number of years. It seemed a logical choice to go back to Primatech Kronos when we were specifying a new line. Primatech Kronos have been really good from the technical support to speaking to one of the two Robbies on technical support. If I have a problem, as soon as they're possible to come back to me, they will. Again, the equipment is brilliant quality. I can't fault that. So moving forward, I can't see why we wouldn't work with uh, Premier Tech Kronos again.